Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. Up here on the 2024 Elan Wingman 86 Black Edition. Um, and this thing's been really fun to test. I have like fond memories and a very positive opinion in general of the Wingman 86 CTI. Maybe you remember that review. I think that's the ski I fell on over at Spruce too. Yeah, my kids loved it. When yeah, that fell. was sweet, but love that ski. So it's really fun to be skiing this and we've logged quite a bit of skiing on it and it is different than that, that CTI. Um, and I think objectively in a good way, but I do think there's an interesting conversation of like what ski is gonna be best for which skier. So I'm gonna keep skiing. Kind of a funny spring day. It started super firm, but it's starting to soften, but great for testing carving skis. And then, yeah, we'll meet you back in the studio and chat more about these very sleek black carving skis. They go great with your suit too. I know, I've, I, the I've whole, noticed that. The whole thing is fantastic. Yeah, I don't think I can ski anything else. Nope. Hey skiers, here we are back in the studio to chat more about this brand new Alon Wingman 86 Black Edition. Um, I'm pretty excited to talk about this. I think it's a cool conversation. I think it's fun to kind of look at it through the lens of that green ski you got yep. over there next to you. And, and we can also kind of talk about it in, in relation to the Ripstick Black Edition skis. And since we filmed that intro, Bob, I had been thinking and I brought this up earlier today, I was thinking back to when you asked Alon, basically like Alon executives, to make you a Ripstick 88 Black Edition non-vapor tip. Yeah, I thought that was a reasonable request. Just... Sure, you can ask for whatever you want. Right. Um, but I thought it was funny kind of thinking back to that moment because Alon was pretty definitively like, no. Right. And I wonder, if when they said no, they already knew about this ski. Probably. And like, it's funny to think about kind of the black editions as a whole too. Um, and thinking like, well, they make this 96 and 106. Like, why wouldn't they make the 88? And yep. this, I think kind of... I think it answers the question. Answers that question. Yeah. Totally. Of like, what would a black edition ski in a mid 80 waist width yep. be? Like what, what would the purpose of that ski be? Yeah. And I think this helps clarify what, what that is. Not totally though, because it's still a little bit different in terms of how they use carbon. Totally. No, I'm more thinking in like a broader sense of like, if you're 88 underfoot or 86 underfoot here, yeah. and you build in strength to the ski, you're likely going to be way more focused on groomer performance, yeah, totally. which is kind of how this feels compared to like if there were a ripstick 88 yeah. black edition yep so i just think that was cool or thought that was cool kind of thinking back to that moment chatting with alan and the looks on their faces and then here here we go especially when i said no vapor tips they thought that yeah was they were nuts. like yeah <laughs> yeah i think they were ready to like yeah kick you out of yeah. whatever day that was like get out of here bob yeah again never hurts to ask <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's the ski right here. Before we dive into the specifics, that is the 2024 Ripstick 96 Black Edition. And then we also have the 2023 Wingman 86 CTI, yep. which I think you could make the argument or not argument, just the statement that prior to this ski, that was the top of the line Wingman model. Totally. You know, widest all the technology. Yep. So pretty cool. Um, wingman skiers do get new cosmetics for 2024. So do not look at that ski and think that's the 2024. It is a little bit different. Construction and shape doesn't change, just cosmetics. Yep. So that's about it. I think that's all the housekeeping that we need to do. Sure. Um, Bob, I'm going to hand you one of these skis and I feel like you probably know what I'm going to ask next. It would be 
lovely if you would just take us on a journey through the construction <laughs> of this ski. Um, yeah, totally. And if you're familiar at all with CTI, this will be kind of a run through for you here. Yeah. Um, but we do start with uh, the same base build. So laminated wood core, a little bit denser than what we see with tube light wood core. Uh, we get a single sheet of titanol through this ski. Uh, and then we also get their carbon rods. So milling out sections uh, along the edges, following the side cut of the ski, taking that wood out and then replacing it with hollow carbon tubes. Uh, the big thing here, and we've talked about it a lot, you know, these tubes are three-dimensional objects. Anytime carbon is used in that format, it really changes the overall character uh, of the carbon, really doing a nice job of mimicking the stability and dampness of metal without the weight. Um, so we get two carbon rods in this. That's kind of one of the main differences between ripstick black yep. and wingman black is that we don't get quad rod in wingman black. Doesn't feel like you need it necessarily. I think there's a limit to how many carbon applications you can put in a ski and maybe they decided that that was it. Octo rod? Octo rod. I just <laughs> keep waiting for more rods to come into play here. Um, but no, they do have those two carbon tubes along the sides. So three-dimensional application of carbon as well as the fact that it's put in under uh, stress. Yep. So they put it in bent to follow the sidewall, uh, leading to more potential energy in the ski. So yep. they're building energy into the ski through the placement of those rods. Uh, we also get their Amphibio True Line technology. So these are asymmetric skis. Yep. We can kind of put them together here. Yeah, we, I made sure we got the appropriate ski. Lovely. Um, so this just excess of material built up along the inside edge, starting here and ending down almost all the way to the tail there. Uh, it goes full width underfoot, that extra material. Uh, and then we also see carbon line technology in here as well. This is the same type of carbon uh, upgrade that we see in ripstick black versus uh, regular ripstick uh, in terms of having that extra tip to tail carbon laminate that does go full width underfoot. So, we're getting the additional carbon line technology from Ripstick Black and putting it in here. That's really the major upgrade from 86, from 86 CTI. CTI to 86 Black Edition. Can we call it a difference, not an upgrade? I can call it whatever you want. You can call it whatever you want. <laughs> I'm going to call it a difference. Sure, but it's more carbon, yep. so that does result in a different type of feel and performance. Yep, I, uh, 100%. Yep. It's amazing, actually. Like, they've only changed a very, very small characteristic about the way that this thing is built. Yep. And I do think it feels different. I suppose I should start over there. <laughs> it feels pretty similar. Yeah. But there's a noticeable difference. And I don't want to cut you off, but if you're done with construction chat... That's pretty much it for construction. The I mean, reason why it feels so similar is because it's the same thing. Right. And by thing, I mean it is the exact same shape. Right. So there really are, there are more similarities between that 86 CTI and this 86 Black Edition than there are differences. Yep. So when we do look at the shape, um, and I think this is, you know, going back to the start of the video where, where we were kind of talking about like what would and what would a Ripstick 88 Black Edition look like? This is really like where we're seeing some significant differences. So yep. a lot less rocker in these skis. We do still get Amphibio profile. So there's more camber along the inside edge, more rocker along the outside edge might be a little bit more noticeable in ripsticks if you were to kind of just press them against each other and yeah. try and find that point, but I you can actually it, see it. It follows this line, yeah, so exactly. not the top diagonal, but the second diagonal. Yeah, it gives you like a good visual yeah. representation you of like kinda, where that is. Yeah. yeah. So a little bit of tip rocker up here, not too much tail rocker, kind of the same, same story back here, you know, a little bit more, a yeah. little extra tail rocker along the outside edge. Do you think it's really cool how they how they're able to do this? It's still just like 
it's a weird thing to try and like wrap your mind around like pressing a ski and then it's like get these weird asymmetrical shaping character like it's just right. very interesting how they can achieve that and then obviously we are 86 underfoot here and we've got a 16.5 meter turn radius so i don't know do you think it's fair to say that shape if you were to remove the amphibio concept would you say that it's fair that shape is pretty straightforward yeah and especially when we talk about other skis in this range that are the wider versions of the front side models versus the narrower version of all mountain models. Yep. So like yes. if you're thinking about Ripstick 88 Correct. as That's the, the narrowest, narrowest. Yeah, of even like a free ride right. collection. Yeah. Or like Kendo in the Mantra collection is Correct. the narrowest versus uh, Deacon 84, which is the widest of yes. you know, that front side collection. I think that's collection. a great analogy to what yeah. we've got going on here. So in that sense, this is this 86 Black Edition is right there with them. It's not nothing crazy about it. Nothing, you know, sticks out. It's, nope. it's pretty much what you'd expect from a ski of this width yep. and application. Yep. Yeah. Straightforward. Yep. But... That's not surprising by any means. No, not at all. Do you want to hand me one of those green skis there? Yeah, I, do the left um, I did this little comparison before we started because as we get into performance, I think this is going to come up talking about performance, so maybe we'll do a little visual hand flex. They're both pretty stiff skis. Yeah, they're like, really stiff. Like This is not a soft flexing ski, um, so it's... It's interesting, and I think if you were to go, like that doesn't feel, doesn't feel stiffer to me, just hand flexing it. Right. So I think if you were to go to your local ski shop and saw these things back, like next to each other on the wall, pick them up and hand flex them, you would just be like, that's the same ski. Right. But they do feel different skiing them. They do. Um, so... I'm curious to hear your opinion, Bob, your experience on them, and then I'd, I'm happy to share mine because <laughs> um, it's a really cool ski, and there's, it's pretty impressive what it can accomplish, but I do think it's a fun conversation like to, it, it, it's like a reminder of the, the value and how good that ski is. Totally, and how many skiers in reality would benefit from a, a useful ski like this. And that's, that's the word that kept coming into my mind would finish a day or a morning on that thing. And I'd be like, wow, that thing was really useful today. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's like pretty much, you know, most skiers are spending most of their time on groomed tra trails, yep. making an attempt at a carved turn in one form or another. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, I think that's where this thing really comes in handy. And for me, having that little bit of extra width underfoot is very helpful. Yep. You know, if you kind of look at the other end, the narrower end, when you're on kind of that narrower true front side ski, whether it's like, you know, 72 or even under underfoot, I mean, that's a narrow balance point to stand on. Yeah. I think it's really helpful for a lot of skiers to have that extended platform. Yeah. Um, for, for me being bigger, it's also helpful to have more material to push against in a carved turn. Still speaking to the width. Still speaking to the width. Yeah. We happened to get on it on like, I, I feel like we never had like a firm, firm day. Maybe like, I was the only one that got it on firm yeah, snow. I think my non-stow day on these was firm. Yep. Um, but like, I feel like every time we ski them here at stow, it was, it was a soft groomer in one form or another. I do recall you kicking spring. up a lot of snow. Yeah, yeah. slightly spring or pack powder. Um, and that's where having that extra width is also really helpful. So mid-radius turns, like this is a 178, we both skied this ski, Yep. 16 and a half meters. I found it to be very happy in that range. Yeah, that 16.5 meter range. Yeah, 16 and a half range. I agree. Um, when you opened it up and went straighter, it wasn't like it, like it chattered or anything like that but it definitely wanted to it wanted turn. To turn. Yeah. And that is a factor of having that extra carbon in there is that when you have that more front side oriented shape with more carbon, especially in the front of the ski, it's gonna wanna be more precise and hook up. Yep. Uh, and it does that. So it's, it was a little harder to kind of change 
turn shape radius, to go yeah. from a fast, yeah. longer radius turn uh, to tighten it up and make those shorter radius arcs. But if you're in that zone of 16 and a half meters, you know, give or take, whatever, uh, it was much happier. And I found the same to be true on the shorter end, too. Yeah. Like, that's a stiff tail. It is. Uh, when you are trying to manipulate the radius of a ski, the stiffer the tail, the more challenging that becomes. Yep. So when you're trying to go from mid radius to short radius, you know, side of the trail type of turns, like, it, it's powerful. Like, yeah. you definitely can't just, like, push through it and expect it to just kind of gently rebound you into the other, into the next turn. No, it's pretty, it's a strong yeah, ski. Yeah, it's strong. Yeah. Uh, just like really sharp, really precise. Um, yeah. So again, my biggest impression of this ski, especially in this 178, uh, I think my tune might change a little bit as to uh, on the, wide, on the uh, longer version, I'm sorry. Um, but in this length, I found it to be very happy at radius, at stated radius. Yeah. And I, I would agree. And like, I don't necessarily, that's not just a downside. Nope. 16.5 is a great place to right. be. Like I'll hang out in 16.5 meter day. turns all day yeah. and I'll be yep. a perfectly happy guy. Um, so yeah, it, it, but it does, I, I felt similar, similar things, um, specifically in relation to that 86 CTI. Yeah. What were the differences you felt? Cause I, it, in having some kind of off-camera conversations, it sounded like you and I had slightly different experiences between the two. I felt like this one was was always faster. Oh. You know, you could let it run more, huh. or rather, it wanted to go more. And I think that whoa, that was scary. Yeah, we just broke a rubber band. <laughs> Crazy. Um, it's an omen. The ski is strong. I know the binding break is strong. <laughs> it has anything to do with the ski? But yeah, I think that the less carbon in this one made it a little bit less kind of twitchy at those speeds interesting if that makes sense or maybe just like less uh less eager to enter that next turn totally. because you probably have a little bit less torsional stiffness right in the extremity of yeah. that ski so it's yeah it's going to allow you to go straighter yeah i found this one easier to manipulate that turn shape so that's that's a, the, about as good of a segue as we can get to, because um, that's what I found too. And even like watching you ski this, it looked like you were having an easier time bending this yeah. than I was. Um, you know, not heavy. Uh, if if at, at my heaviest, I'm like 165. Right. Which maybe I'm close to right now, who knows. But still, not, not heavy. Um, and I thought it was like a really interesting difference between these two skis. Like I said at the beginning, like they're more similar than different. Like right. they, same shape, same turn radius, same concept, same width. Like it's almost the same ski. What I found on this is it, if, if we have footage on the black edition, instead of just saying this, uh, what I found on the black edition is I could push myself to my limits. Okay. That was like... I think that was the biggest difference I found is like there is there was no limit to how hard I could ski that how like the highest edge angle I could possibly generate like it just was begging for more and more and more yeah. and it stays so smooth and so composed and just very business like and it is like it's like 16.5 16.5 16.5 16.5 maybe like 19 maybe Right. But it did, like, it just makes those, like, you just link, like, basically what feels like perfect carve, perfect carve, perfect carve, perfect carve. And the ski has n no limit, really, to how hard you can push it when you're doing that. Yeah. Which really, I think, comes, comes through mostly in, like, what edge angle you're generating. And, like, you know, that, like, kind of, like, lateral G-force feel. Like, it's not, like... Neither ski for me wanted to go just longitudinally faster than the other. So yeah. kind of interesting to hear your take on that. It sounds like that you did have a little bit of feel for that, but I didn't notice that as much. Um, it was more just like how hard, like how high you could get that angle and how hard you could push it. Um, we did that Wingman 86 CTI review 
Maybe not last year. I don't even remember. I think the beginning of last year, actually. Uh, I think it was a year, a year earlier. It could have been. Anyways, I've spent considerable amount of time on that ski yep. over the years. And for me, the biggest difference that I found between the two was the amount of energy that I could create out of a turn which I think came mostly from bending it. Yeah. So I find that in that ski, in the Wingman 86 CTI, I can actually generate more energy out of that ski, I think because I can flex it a little bit more easily, but I can ski this ski harder. That makes sense. So yeah. it's like, it would like kind of come down to like my mindset and like personality on a given day. Like, do I feel like skiing at 80% of my ability level and just having a really good time, I would choose that ski. Yeah. If I went to the mountain and I was like, I want to ski at 100% of my ability level, I want to push myself, I want to like make the best carving turn I've ever made, I would take this ski. And like, how about those transitions too, between the turns? It's very like, smooth. Very smooth. There were moments where I thought I was going to high side myself. Yeah because it's so easy to roll yep. into the next turn, where on some skis, if you like, you know, like that feeling when you roll too early and you're like, oh, oh whoops, boy. I'm yeah. like going over now. <laughs> yeah. Like that never happened to me on these. So yeah. yeah, it's like incredibly intuitive in how they roll into yeah. the next turn, um, but no limit to the strength once you're in that turn. And I think yeah. like turn exit, it wants to stay carving. Yeah. Like it, it's it, not, it's, it's not like it just like slips away yeah. and, and smears a turn super easily. Yeah. No. And again, that kind of goes back to manipulating it to be that more short turn ski. Yeah. You know, like if you enjoy doing like high energy skidded turns on the side of the trail, like yeah. you better be ready for it. And or like go buy a Ripstick 88. Right. I think that's a better choice for that skier. Totally. Or in like, we didn't really take this into many demanding off-piste situations because like I don't really want to <laughs> and it's like I think it's completely fair to say that's not the intention of this ski right again looking at Alon's catalog there's that I'd rather take that that 86 CTI again it's like just yeah a little bit more friendly I'd also like to rather much rather take a ripstick 88 right and that's only it's two millimeters difference in waist width. Yeah. So like we're basically in the same exact like conversation for width and application and is it an all mountain ski, that right. kind of stuff. Like this is an all mountain ski. Um, so yeah, I didn't find it super easy making shorter skidded turns. Definitely didn't find it super easy in moguls or anything like that. Yeah, I didn't have much of a desire to no. bring it into firm moguls <laughs> i mean yeah and like it, it can do it yeah um and i'm trying to think of like another ski that's similar that like i don't really like to take into mogul i mean i think like i don't know just basically take every ski in that category like right. stiff mid 80 underfoot carving skis like generally i don't like them in moguls right the experience that i've found and, and an interesting phenomenon has you often have, you do much better on those skis and moguls. Yeah. Like I remember skiing the Experience 86 Ti, which we actually skied like back to back with right. this ski. And you skied moguls on that thing, and you're like, "This is great." And I ski moguls on it, and I'm like, "This is gonna break my leg. <laughs> like, I don't really want to do this." Yeah. So that's kind of I think this ski falls into that same category. Like right. if I if we made you go ski some moguls on this, you'd make it look great. Thanks. It, I mean, it, it would look fine, and I don't know yeah. that it would necessarily translate like what it actually feels like. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I'd say is like when we have our moguls here with ice in between. Like, great, It'd great, be great for that. Nice yeah, and precise. Nice spaced out yep. moguls. That early, early season centerline yep. bumps where it's like ten feet of flat ice and then a bump and then yep. ten feet of ice and then a bump. Yeah, it'd be great in that. But and that's how moguls are a lot of the times in a lot of yeah, the places. Yeah, that's true. It's not like yeah, yeah. So yeah. that that does exist. So there's definitely that that application does exist for those skis. I think it's a cool ski. Yep. I think it's a really nice addition to Alon's line as a whole. I actually think it like rounds out their ski collection pretty nicely. 
because like you know like we started with like you had asked for that ripstick 88 yeah. black edition like there was not that that ski is weak over there that 86 cti but there was like yeah there was at least room for them to come out with yeah. a mid 80 underfoot really strong ski totally and i think for people that have found a liking in a lawn skis or even if you haven't really like maybe rip sticks aren't quite for you and and but you you just love ripping turns you know deacon 84 skiers there's i think there's a lot of comparisons here yeah. and a lot of different a lot of different people out there that would really enjoy these right great west coast carving ski yeah totally like no, I mean, like I said, we had it, like, I th feel like I skied it in soft snow, like soft groomers. Just packed powder, like perfect packed powder. Phenomenal. Yeah. Absolutely really good. phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. So if you live, like, Mammoth or some yeah. some place that gets a ton of snow, actually Mammoth gets pretty firm sometimes. I don't know the best analogy. Like somewhere in Colorado. If you want an Alta carving yeah. ski, it would be a great, be awesome. great choice for that. So, Bob, anything else you want to mention about the... Wingman 86 Black Edition here. And we could touch on the binding system just to, for a minute. Sure. Um, we didn't see it in the catalog that it's going to come flat like this uh, green CTI does. Um, no difference in the ski regardless. Just you kind of get that uh, EMX 12 binding that goes along with it. Gets you a little bit higher off the ski, more of that front side uh, capability versus putting, I don't know, like a Griffin or something on, sure. this, uh, uh, on the green version here. Um, and then you also get the tip protector with the system binding, whereas flat does not. So just minor differences. Um, but I think for a ski like that, makes sense. it makes sense to have that system binding on there. It works great. Gets you a little, gets you higher off the ski, better leverage. Totally. You know, it's not too heavy. I think it's a, I think it's a great option. Yeah, you know, be like a, be a really good, um, just beer league ski bum race ski. Totally. You, you raced on a bunch of skis this wide this season and had a blast. This works well for me. Yeah, it works well for a lot of people. Yeah. We have some elite, elite level ski racers in yeah. our local race league that race on 88, yeah, mid to 86 upper 80s. underfoot skis. Yeah. So that's it. That is the 2024 Elan Wingman Black Edition. Um, certainly let us know if you have any questions. We will chat about this ski at some point too. Um, they don't change. They just get some new graphics for next season. Um, really, with Elan in general for next season, we're getting this ski, Playmakers, and just about everything else stays the same. Yeah. I like how they changed their black graphic into a different black graphic. Well, I think it probably had a lot to do with this. <laughs> yeah. Because they match now. Like this, they both have those little, like, subtle, you guys might not even know, might not even be able to see I them on camera, shinier. Um, but they do have some like subtle matte yep. and shiny stripes. So super cool. Yeah. Let us know if you have any questions and we will talk to you soon. Bye.